Okay guys, we are gonna focus on our shading today and wrapping things up. So the first thing I wanna talk about is kind of just where I'm at right now. So, um, so, so far I have kind of focused on the hair and then I worked my way down to the eyes and the nose and the mouth. And in that process, I started doing the beard because the beard was really important for the mouth to start to develop, okay? So um, I told you I would talk a little bit about skin, about the beard, and then we'll talk about hair in the background. So as you continue to work, make sure that you are erasing your grid in small sections as you work so that you don't end up with a grid line you know, through a light area. Um, so that's why most of my grid is gone in this skin area, et cetera. Okay, so the first thing is to remember to grab a sheet of paper. You can fold it in half. This is just computer paper. And that way you have a protection for your hand and your drawing. Okay, so as you work, so like if I'm looking up here in the skin area, um, I want to treat this area almost as if I'm not going to touch anything with pencil. Okay, so it's super light. So I am looking at those subtle, subtle, subtle wrinkles that are in his forehead. And I'm drawing them in there and I'm using my grid. Even though my grid is mostly gone, I've erased. I still left just enough to give me that information about where things should be and how they should fall on the drawing. So again, I'm kind of looking at my photo about 60 to 70 percent of the time so that I'm really focused on where everything comes out of each box. This one up here, about here. All right, and he doesn't have too many, you know, distinct uh, wrinkles. He's not that old, okay? Um, but then after I kind of get that in there, I'm going to start looking at the shadow, okay? So there is this highlight that kind of climbs up the edge of his face, so that's really important to leave there. And it kind of goes all the way up into his hairline up here. So I'm going to leave that, but then as I go in, you're going to start to change direction. So my shadow for my skin is going to be in a different direction than the hair. Even though in the photo, they kind of blend, I want to make sure that I'm still kind of distinctly showing the difference between how the hair falls and how the shadow on the head falls. So this is that darkest area over in box like D2, 3 area. And there is a little bit of a light patch that kind of comes through it a little bit. It's definitely dark down here by the eyebrow so I've got to get that in as well and then I've got to make sure that if that wrinkle gets darker that I'm drawing that in I don't want to lose that information as I start to develop that shadow now as I come across to where that shadow disappears in his head and obviously I need to spend a little bit more time in here but I want to make this video a little shorter for you today so I'm constantly drawing lightly and overlapping to blend its skin we want to keep it nice and smooth now as I work my way this way and as it lightens up I'm really lightening up the grip on my pencil and I'm doing that little bit of shading that comes from the hairline but then I'm letting it just gently sort of fade out as it comes down. And there is a little dark patch along here, so I want to make sure I don't miss that. And it kind of crawls down to where the, the bridge of the nose is. So 
so you can kind of see that it extends up in there. But then as it fades back into that lightest area, I've got to make sure it blends. So I'm just barely touching the paper and going from there. If you're having a hard time, you can switch to your regular pencil, but really put your pencil on its side and go as light as possible. Don't have it upright because you'll get um, kind of more, more lines versus shading. So you really got to be careful with that as well. So super, super, super subtle. We want this to fade out into those lightest areas there. And I just jabbed my paper a little bit. Um, but then I've got to make sure that I'm looking carefully because just because this is light over here, there's actually a touch of shading that kind of comes across this side here. It's very subtle, but we definitely need to make sure that we include it to give that little bit of change of pace from this like lightest area over here. So very, very subtle as you go, work your way down your face. And then as I come down this way, it's still pretty light, but I do need to kind of blend out any sort of existing shading that I put in. Again, look how far back I'm holding my pencil. My grip is really loose. I'm making sure that everything where it's supposed to be smooth has got that smooth shading going on. All right, so that's kind of how you're going to address your skin as you go. And don't do anything like try to blend it with your finger or anything like that. Keep it all hand and pencil work. You'll end up getting smudges on your paper and it just won't look right. All right, so obviously I still have a little bit of work to do on the skin in particular. What I'm looking at up here is just making sure that my dark areas are as dark as they need to be in this zone up here and that they develop and match this whole side of the face. I probably need to come down here and develop this area a little bit more as well. So looking at the darkness of the shadow and really making sure that the shape is correct as I go. And then that sort of fades into the beard area and then this shadow over here as well. So it, the tricky part is making sure that your hair still stands out from those deep shadow areas that you can see that textural difference in there. So when I did the beard and as I keep going with it, the one thing that I'm double checking is the directionality of how the hair falls. So I'm really paying attention to how it's layered up in each square. And I am kind of doing almost like a scribbly like motion in some spots. And then I'm going back and doing more like individual markings for the hair. And I have to be careful in this box right here because there is a kind of bit of lighter area. So I need to leave some negative space to represent those like whiter hairs or those the highlight from the hair. But then down in the bottom, there's like some shading. So it's darker down here so I'm layering up this bottom portion more and even shading it in but then as I come upward I'm gonna leave a little bit more negative space as I work to make sure that it looks believable and same thing in this area there's some darker patches in more of that goatee area so it's all about layering. So if you have facial hair or hair like this in your actual head of your celebrity, then make sure you are layering and kind of changing your texture and checking your directionality of the hair as you go. 
okay? And then don't forget to kind of fill in any skin areas with any appropriate soft shading. It's kind of dark down here, so I need to develop this dark area of the, of the beard. So I need to go back and just kind of shade over the top. And what that's doing is allowing those original marks to stay on there. But I'm going to go ahead and push some of my values a little darker to really develop this shadow area down in this corner. And I would do that all the way around, okay? Um, the last thing I want to talk about is your background and your clothing. So you need to be careful not to forget it to check details in there. So I've got like a necklace detail that I never drew that I should probably put in there along with that, those subtle line textures for the sweater or the top of the shirt, whatever it may be. Now, um, what you do wanna be careful is if you have a background like mine where the shoulders sort of disappear in the background, I still want you to do your best to try to find those shoulders and then um, consider what you're gonna do for your background versus your clothing. So I would finish up the clothing first. The, the celebrity is the most important, but when you go back to your background, you have to decide, do I want to shade this solid? And if so, you just really got to go for it. Um, a lot of you have lighter backgrounds, so it should be fine, and you just pick a shade and shade it. Um, but you got to make sure that you take the time to erase your grid, because we don't want to see any letters of your number or your numbers. And then in my case, because I have a dark background, and I know a few of you do as well, you need to pick a direction for your shading that's kind of different from everything else. So I might pick like straight up and down and kind of stick with that, or do straight right to left all the way across, all the way down when I'm done. And I wanna make sure that I'm using my paper as I go to make sure that I'm keeping it nice and consistent. Okay, so really every inch of your paper is basically going to get touched except for those lightest highlight areas. Those will stay the white of the paper or the off white of the paper, I should say. All right, guys, I will go ahead and do a time lapse, but hopefully this helps kind of get you kind of geared up to wrap up the rest of your project. Good luck.